Oh, hey, guys. Can you get me to the Traveller? How about your Sparrow, sir? Sparrow, good idea. Nice one. Hmm. Better call my Sparrow. Where's my Sparrow? No, sir. Okay, okay. Just, just get me off the plane. There's a wizard on the moon. Fuck off, Dinklebot! <laughs> Now, yeah, Uber. Um, I'm on Nessus. I need to get to the Traveller. The name? James Bond. Okay, how much would that be? Get the. F What's up, guys? Welcome to another Obite review, and we are doing Destiny Two. Yes, I played it. He did play Destiny. I played Destiny. You can prove it because I played with him online. I, well, I can't prove it, but I can just say that you did. He's, he's my character witness. <laughs> my lack of character witness, perhaps. <laughs> yes, thank you for joining us on this review. Um, it's a little bit late. I mean, Destiny did come out in, what, September? Yeah, but we waited for the old PC because there's going to be a better one. Well, the reason we waited for this because we both played it on PS4, the original Destiny 1. Mm -hmm. And I really wanted to see what the difference was going to be like, how it would be any different at all, um, and see how it would act on PC. And uh, Better. And there's no way yeah. that he would have bought it on a console when he could have a 60 frames per second. It's the king we won. <laughs> but right off the bat, I'll say one thing. It's optimised and plays very, very stably at 60 frames per second on a PC. Smug. <laughs> but not just that. I mean, lots of people can do the 60 frames per second on PC. It's not difficult. We know this. But the fact is that the game, when you switch out of the game to go and check something online or tweak a setting or put some music on or whatever it might be, it doesn't jitter. It doesn't... You just come straight back. Yeah, it's it's smooth. It's There's no kind of... There's no barrier to doing that, so it just feels like it's been optimised for a PC really well. And of course, mouse and keyboard. Yeah, I didn't think it would make much difference, but it does. It certainly does. It so. does. So, Destiny 2. What is the story of Destiny 2, Snare? Well, well, so basically, to cut a long story short, you have the Traveller, which is this kind of omnipotent, weird, power-giving... Yeah. Um, knowledge giving kind it's, of it's ball, kind of like the force but in ball form which arrives on earth and then you have a golden age of humanity for a few hundred years where we extend our life and travel the stars and stuff like that but a load of cabal nasties come along and try and basically contain the traveler in this big cage yeah they put a big stocking over it yeah and try and control the light and everyone gets really quite angry at that the tower where you spend most of the game in Destiny 1 gets decimated and you have to spend your first story mission going through that. And you have actually got a bad guy in Destiny 2. Yes, there is a bad guy. He's a little bit underwhelming, but he has a hair lip. Yeah, well, the other one does. I think they he all has have a, hair lips. He has a mask like Bane. Yes, but he doesn't look like this. No, I don't think Bane did either. <laughs> <laughs> so the story it actually feels more together. Um, there is actually a story here, as you will test it to. Yes, uh, there is a story. So it, it actually feels uh, like you've got a little bit more being told to you inside the game, uh, uh, instead of that fucking grimoire that you had to read all the stuff from in Destiny yeah, 1. Yeah, and not in the game either, like on mm. a mobile app. Yeah. Um, certainly that story is it's compelling enough. Um, there's enough stuff going on. But you have some cutscenes in the middle of the story, as you would expect. And they are beautifully done. They look great, and there's comedy in it. Yeah, they, Cass and Nathan filling for anything is an amazing, amazing thing, in my opinion. Yeah, the chicken joke is my favourite. I mean, he's just... I like him so much. Stop having a man crush. <laughs> so, um, the game itself is pretty much split into two parts. You have your campaign that you can go ahead and play to get your level up to level 20, and then the game starts, as it kind of did in Destiny 1. Yeah, the the campaign can definitely be seen as a tutorial, uh, and your level is really sort of insignificant in your overall game. It's kind more of. about your power level than your level itself. It does lock off certain <clears throat> um, game activities until you get to certain levels, 
So there is like a gateway thing going on there. Yeah, it also does that with power levels. Though. Yeah, but it, as in the first game, it was all to do, well, originally to do with how much light your uh, your armour and weapons could give you. That denoted your level. Um, in this game, it's more to do, that doesn't exist. And I think they got rid of it in Destiny 1. I stopped playing before they did that. Um, but they in Destiny 2, you basically collect equipment that adds to your kind of attack rating. Um and you have your exotics, legendaries, rares, and commons. Um, I don't know why commons exist because you don't really need them aside from the first maybe two or three levels. Yeah, you've always got something better. And I, to this day, I don't understand why. Uh, if you go and visit someone in, you know, one of the areas that sells stuff, they sell you green stuff. I I don't understand. No, that completely fooled me as well the first time I went in because it comes up and you get a little square with a thing in it and it's your mission reward. So you're like, oh, okay, cool. And then these four other boxes came up, so I'm like, I get more stuff. <laughs> so I'm like, click, 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 click. And you give me them twice. What? Click, 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 click. Oh wait, you're a shop. See, this mm. is the problem with giving games to people without any intelligence. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it is on to be on your side. A lot of the things that are quite handy and that I found in the game, I found them because it's not really told to you yeah it's not signposted a lot of the stuff that like he's just told me literally how to mod my weapon no idea how to do it and again it's not something in the, in the original destiny you had uh you did something lots you, you used that weapon lots and therefore you could level it up or choose a particular thing they can do you can do that right off the bat but you do have mods to change your a weapon type maybe give it more uh precision damage or stuff like that um and shaders as well uh, which we'll come on to later, uh, but the, the the game itself, you've got all your main modes, so you have this level cap thing. You can go do different things. You play your, your campaign mission, then you go on to doing the end game, uh, which which results in kind of a couple of quests, um, exotic armor and exotic weapon quest arcs, which are quite grindy. Yeah, definitely. they are quite grindy. Um, but you also have the crucible, which is a PvP area. Um, which has different modes, which I haven't really understood the difference between them yet. Um, you have a main kind of crucible, uh, low intensity as they call it, and then the high intensity. But I'm not quite sure what the difference would be. Uh, that one's high, this one's <laughs> low. But what it actually means, um, the crucible matches are crucible matches. Um, you get some interesting modes, uh, like detonating bombs and kind of capturing the flag kind of things pretty standard fare but they are still entertaining uh, and I, f I felt they were too easy but that's just me I, I shouldn't be as good as I am yes, he was in like, Destiny 2 I rated number 2 does not compute absolutely I, I'd never do that in, in shooters at all ever games games at all ever <laughs> <laughs> I'm always number 2 in games yeah because you're playing against me there we go number set you one. up for that one you can have that one <laughs> So you get your Crucible PvP area, you also have your strikes and raids, which are groups of three or six uh, players together going to do an, uh, a particular mission. They're, they're pretty much standard from Destiny 1, they don't really change, but um, the actual events inside them, you get to know where the enemies come from, you would actually end up grinding them. And you get okay loot, but you in, in Destiny 2 you have Eververse, which is a way to collect your kind of level up awards which give you shaders sparrows <coughs> money <laughs> <laughs> or you can use them to buy microtransactions of bright engrams so in the original destiny you had green blue and uh, purple engrams with the occasional exotic yellow one now you have the bright engrams as well yes and engrams are kind of mixed in with leveling up stuff which is a nice way to get more loot but i'm talking too much and you need to say something something there we go. So when you get your engrams, uh, you can either collect them from Raoul, the cryptarch, who decodes them and says, oh, look what I found inside. Didn't you see this in the first place? Um, here's some stuff and some nice loot for you. Or you can level up collectibles in the various areas and take them to a, a, the kind of contact point in that area. And after a period you know, of increasing your reputation with them by collecting all these things, boom, you get a... A reward and so the loot is constantly coming at you which is so much better than destiny one yeah i think it's fair to say that destiny 2 is better than destiny one in almost every respect 
Um, I maybe played three, four hours. Destiny 1 couldn't stand it. I would rate that game as a three. Vanilla Destiny, I never played anything else. Just played that. Um, didn't want to play it. Paid like 50 quid for it on PS Network because I was stupid in it by a physical version, which was cheaper. And then never played it. But this one, I've completed the campaign. I've done some multiplayer. I am kind of like done with it now. Um, but I got a lot more enjoyment out of it than I was expecting to. I was expecting to just play it, come on camera and just go, yeah, go and play Warframe instead. See, I've, I've not played Warframe. And I know a friend of mine at work would probably um, tut at that straight away because he loves Warframe. But my friend sat now next year is going to tie at that. <laughs> <laughs> so when you have uh, a game like Destiny 2 where you're expecting it to be shit, I really was expecting it to be another Destiny, uh, especially when you find out that the enemies you're fighting are the same. Aside from one tweak, they're the same as Destiny 1. Um, it felt like, okay, you're just rehashing. This isn't a new game. But do you know what? I didn't feel that way at all. I felt like the story and the environments were well done. I felt like the the characters were they were solid. I mean, it's what you remember from the last game, and it, it's just well, I can't remember more. anybody from the last game apart from Dinklebot. But no, the the enemies are the same. Um, you get to meet kind of a, a tweaking difference, and at the end of the campaign, you can see where the next game is going to or the next bit is going to be, whether that's the DLC or Destiny Three. Um, and you would, considering length of time between games, you would hope that'd be DLC. Yeah, yeah, I'd, I'd probably expect it to be DLC. But the Curse of Osiris is the next DLC due out in December time. They were waiting for the PC version to be launched. So, um, yeah, uh, I, I've got nothing but good things to say about this game. Really, I don't have any negatives. I have a few. Take him away, Lee. <laughs> uh, I find some of the quest markers can disappear and reappear and point you the wrong way. I've like spent ages running around and it's just been going, go this way. And I've gone that way. And then it's like, no, go back the way you came. That's what, pick one. Or you could just put it down to taking in some of the beautiful scenery in the game. No. <laughs> the textures and stuff are beautiful in this game, by the way. It is really a good are. looking game, yeah. I, I would absolutely agree with that. Um, I, I think you had an issue with the sparrows, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you don't mm. get sparrows until you finish the campaign, pretty much. Mm. Well, even after that, because I think you have to be 20 for it. Yeah. I think. Yeah, I finished the campaign at like 18, I think. I, I suppose there is ways to get it earlier by buying them or, you know, getting them in a bright engram from well, the you, shop. You can, yeah, you can get like uh, different kinds of sparrows, whether or not you can use them, I'm unsure. And one other thing just to mention is clans. Um, this is something I didn't, uh, I don't think it existed in Destiny 1 when I was playing it, but the clan mechanic is actually quite good. So... I've had a few invites from randoms while I've been playing the game, and I took the plunge just to see what is the benefit to being part of a clan. It's loot. It's loot, yeah. <laughs> it is loot, but you get um, tiers of uh, kind of extra help when you're part of a clan, so you get more stuff from Cabal enemies, or if you're playing with a clan member, you might get better loot in a raid or you know a strike. So it's pointing towards people you know, being part of a clan and working together to get the next tier. Um, and you get rewards when your clan goes through a certain level of experience that week. Uh, so there's lots of bits and pieces you can pick up. So even if you're lone wolfing it most of the time, it's still worthwhile being in the clan. Yeah, and you're working towards something and you get another avenue to get uh, or new revenue stream of loot coming to you. So I, I like the clans. I'm not sure if I can go on and create my own clan just out off the bat, whether there's a process. You probably have to go onto bungee.net and do it that way. Or use a mobile phone app. Yeah, probably. I think it actually did point me to the mobile app. Oh, great. Um, to mo monitor and to keep in contact with my clan mates and stuff. But I don't know any of them, so... My sarcasm is becoming real. It's like art imitating life, imitating art. So, yes, the clan mechanic is good. Um, and one other thing about the weapons is all of the weapons, skills and classes and subclasses, abilities and stuff like that, they are... I think you've got a lot of room to express yourself as a character. All of the guns that you'll find through your time playing Destiny, they have individual perks. You'll see some duplicates, you'll see some similar guns, but you'll have certain quirks to some guns, like there's an exotic gun that pairs with a legendary that refill each other. So I, while you're using one, it refills the other one. And in those raids where you don't get loot drops, oh sorry, ammo drops, um, that's really handy because you're not going to run out of stuff. So there's little, little perks actually make it very interesting to 
to choosing what gun and you're left with a choice rather than just going in and going, um, oh, that one's got a higher attack rating, I'll just have that one. Yeah, um, to, uh, to give you a counterpoint to that, while we were playing online, Snare's like, check out my laser. He's lasering everything. I'm like, oh, that's cool. And then what, 20 minutes, 30 minutes later, I'm like, check out what I got. <laughs> laser. <laughs> it's a trace rifle. Trace rifle. Get it right. Laser. People that like Destiny are going to take the piss when you can't get the guns right. Well, I don't care. Sorry. Now, at the moment, <laughs> I haven't noticed, and I don't I haven't actually looked and researched whether there is the ultimate gun, like there was in Destiny 1, being Galahorn. Um, I know that one of the guns from Destiny 1, the Midas, uh, is it Midas? Minus multi-tool. Um, it's basically a scout rifle, exotic scout rifle, that's been brought over from Destiny 1. Um, so there's bits and pieces they've kept in that people liked, but I haven't seen a Galahorn. I don't know if that exists in Destiny 2, which is the rocket launcher that everyone, it was just like, if you don't have this, don't bother doing the raids, because you need it. Um, but yeah, it's, it's the weapons are good, and they look good, and you can apply shaders to them, um, and your armour and stuff, so it's all good. Yeah, interestingly, they've made a decision as well to have some parts of the game in third person, and other parts locked into first person. That's the same as Destiny 1. Yeah, so you go to the Crucible when you're in third person, you activate your super, it's third person. I would like to see the option to actually just be able to play the game from third person. Because you spend all this time with Maybe shade. there is a button and we don't know. Well, it's the first time going all this loot and applying shaders and you can't look at yourself until you go to the Crucible. Or your inventory screen that you're always in. Oh, that, yes. Well done, you. But <laughs> I would like... I mean, other games do it. I mean, the the Pariah in the Room Battlefront 2 lets you do it. Shh! It's a bad word. <laughs> now you just made this video completely unusable. Or, you know... It'll be get searched for. I'm sure if we have Battlefront 2, ooh, on it. <laughs> ooh, it's a tag, yeah. Ooh. Um, it would get a whole lot more hits than the Destiny 2 review. Yeah, well, three months later. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he has a point. <laughs> but, you know, we on this channel, we like to do games that we like to, to play um, and games we don't like to play on the reviews. But <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think that the, the, the games that you can play in Destiny as a single lone player... A lone wolfy, you know, it's fine. You can still have fun. You can grind. You can go and collect stuff around the environment. You can battle and shoot enemies as they spawn around the place. You can do public events, which you still get loot for. High value targets that kind of appear and they're a bit tougher than normal enemies. Um, there's lots of stuff to do as a lone wolf. You can do your strikes and match make uh, with other people. Uh, there's, it's just stuff to do. But if you want to do the crucible, you want to do the raids that take like six hours plus. Um, you know. Well, I think it's six hours first time when you don't know what you're doing, and then a bit less when you know what you're doing. Um, I don't know of any speed um, awards for doing the raids yet. I haven't looked that up, but usually they. I think someone did one of the raids in Destiny One in like 15 minutes, because um, they just literally ran through everything, um, knew exactly where to go, and did stuff. It's crazy to watch, but there's it, there's just lots to do, and it's going to keep me playing it for some time at least. I will definitely check out the new DLC because I bought the special dish. Of course I did. <laughs> um, it's not a great special dish. It's okay. I wouldn't advise or I wouldn't recommend buying it. Well, you bought the mid sort of tier one. Didn't you? Yeah, I think so. I, d I think there might have been one above mine, but it came in a nice sized box. It's still shelfable. Um, it had some artwork, some soundtrack, the usual fare, a map of the areas, I think. Um, and it wasn't crazy stuff but it was good I think that's that's a very good way to describe the game mm. it, it's good but it's you know, not crazy good no, but I, I, it boots up really quickly um, I don't have any problems with the, using the battle net um, sort of service to get that game running uh, I think there was some problems with the recent up uh, hotfix that you had to install yeah um, it wouldn't let me log on so I had to digging around on Google and I repa repaired the installation it worked fine after that so it didn't take too long to about 10 minutes to go through the files. Yeah so if you're a Destiny fan of Destiny 1 I think you actually will be split on this because it is different they've listened to some criticism from the first game um, and then passed that on and improved it for the second but in doing so they've maybe made it a bit easier I think some of the enemies hitting headshots is easy to do. Yeah well the, the that guy's probably Red Legion. Yeah, the Cabal. The Cabal, yeah. yeah. 
Uh, they have massive heads anyway. Yeah. So. They do. But what I'm saying is like the crucible thing where it's too easy to kill people or um, some of the bullet sponges aren't bullet spongy as they were in Destiny 1. I mean, when you get the, the, the public event of the walker, you know, kind of spider-based tank thing, ant-looking jobby. I remember that from the first one. Yeah, mm. but that's in the second one as a public event. Um, but they're much easier to kill, and they take much less time to kill. Um, especially if there's more of you, obviously. But it just felt like it's a little bit easier of a game. So if you liked Destiny 1, maybe you're in like a Stockholm Syndrome of grinding. I like grinding. Look at me, I've got my stuff. I've ground, grinded away for this. And then... In Destiny 2, you're looking at a, a game where you can get things really easily, very frequently, and it must not feel like a, as much of a challenge. So, depending on what kind of player you were in Destiny 1, I think you will be split on Destiny 2. I think also, you know, a Destiny 1 player that's been playing it sort of up to Destiny 2's release will come in maybe a bit underwhelmed because there's not as much in-game content because it hasn't had the years of DLC applied to it. And it's not different enough, maybe. I mean, the enemies are the same... Um, it's still got the same format of strikes, raids, night. Are oh, the nightfall strike, uh, nightfall raid and stuff? That's the mo really, really like no respawn. You know, you'll get fucked if you die, kind of thing. That was something that really bugged me actually. What's that? In the campaign, uh, the traveller's captured and you you lose your light. So you can't basically, if you die, that's it, you're dead. But all it does is like say, okay, you've died now respawn at the start again it doesn't you're not dead you just respawn having to kill everything again what you want the game to shut down yeah that'd be great <laughs> that's a silly thing it's to like say. It, there should be like this short section of risk before you get your light back because it's not particularly difficult to get your light back i mean i don't think i i think outside of the first time i did i haven't died doing it so it would be nice if like you actually died then if you didn't get your light back because in the law, that's what would want, happen. Do you want to piss people off in games? What is wrong with you? Great. What? I'm sorry. That's the stupidest thing I've ever heard. I would said love that. Any game in the any game you like, and we applied that logic to it. Oh come on! Look at the old games. Game over. It was a game over. It wasn't fucking respawn. Ah. So you want you want a game to be like 1983? No, I want part of the game where it makes sense thematically for that to happen. He's staring at me like I'm a knobhead. <laughs> Comment down below. Like, I'm in shock. No, I mean, it's like a 20-minute section of the game, yeah? So if you die in that 20-minute section, I want that character gone. They did that with the game, didn't and they? And it's right at the start, so it's not like you've invested hundreds of hours into the character either. But what would happen? You just go back and make the same character again. Yes. So what's the point? Because then you'd have to be more careful. You'd have to play more strategically. It wouldn't just be a case of like, oh, if I die, it, fuck it, I'll just don't, respond. Please promise me you never go into game design. Maybe I have. Because Maybe I have. You, you're talking <laughs> about making people remake a character with, with the limited choice of customization you can do, okay, and then play a small... This is why you like Bloodborne, isn't it? <laughs> I like Challenge. That's... No. No. <laughs> That's why I play no, Bloodborne. Very wrong, easy. Wrong. Please comment down below and let me know that I'm right. Um, He's so wrong. Please, Thematically, just, it makes please. no goddamn sense. Your light's gone, but you can respawn anyway. Uh, but I think you get a slither of light, don't you? Yeah, that's how you get your light back. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm lost. I'm in shock and lost. Yes, pretty much. I, I feel like I am in lost. He's schlossed. <laughs> <laughs> but I've completely lost my thread of thought. I don't know about you. Um, this is a helpful review now because I don't know what we're talking about. <laughs> Well, how amazing oh yeah, the nightfalls. So we're oh, talking about the, the difficult ones, yeah. <laughs> uh, just, just on that point, it was just to say that all the stuff you're familiar with with Destiny One of those bits is there. Um, they have this new thing called guided game, which I'm not quite sure what it is. Um, I haven't tried it. I don't have five friends to do those uh, raids. Who are playing Destiny on PC? I have more than five friends. <laughs> yes, you have less. <laughs> but no, seriously. Talking about that, you know, it's, it would be a nice way to kind of, if you are playing um, Destiny on PC, then uh, let us know down in the comments what your gamer tag is, and we'll maybe make a clan for Overbite Gaming. He will make a clan for Overbite Gaming. <laughs> yes, and then we'll see where it goes from there. And I will just be playing Warframe instead. 
Yeah, we gotta have fun, or we'll frame, and we'll have fun on Destiny. Space Destiny. Ninja. Destiny. <laughs> See, I've been a fan of Destiny One. Uh, I played with friends and had a great time with it. Uh, but it, with Destiny Two, I've had just as much fun lone wolfing it and playing with you online. That was fun, wasn't it? Wasn't it? I had to wear headphones. Yeah, it was a bit tricky with the with the microphone. Like, we, yeah, I don't know leveling out stuff was a bit tricky, but wasn't terrible. Wait until it starts cutting out. Yeah, that's mm. your connection. Um. <laughs> Two hundred and fifty megabits, bitch. Well, it's all turned off. Doesn't matter, does it? They're not turned off. Trust me. <laughs> well, <laughs> if you had enough bandwidth to get aside from your porn. That could. Yeah. Yeah. But guys, you know that is Destiny Two. Um, I don't think there's anything else worth re really saying apart from I've enjoyed my time with it. Uh, the gameplay is solid. It's definitely not. Um, uh, I was expecting the sequel to be shit, but it definitely wasn't. And I'm looking forward to the DLC. I'm looking forward to the following on Destiny games over the next few years because I actually think that this has got a bit more sort of bollocks to it now. Um, Destiny 1 was like all this overhype, and then you kind of felt it was falling on its ass, and it's just nobody really enjoyed or shouldn't enjoy a game that's not got any content to it. Destiny 2 shows me they're taking themselves less seriously. There's a bit of humour. There's a bit of interaction that's fun to listen to between the main characters. It's got a good voice cast. Um, they all do a great job. So I'm looking forward to the next instalment. So that's what a game should do. Be fun, make me want more. And I do. So my rating, I would give Destiny 2 on the PC an 8. Okay. Um... I was pleasantly surprised by it because I hated Destiny 1 without question. Just did, couldn't stand it. It was totally not my thing at all. You should see his face when I used to mention Destiny. It, it, like you could see veins just like popping up on your head. It, was... it, it looked like he stuffed a bicycle pump up my ass and pumped it. <laughs> well, not just randomly put it up there. <laughs> but no, um, this was a pleasant surprise. They've improved on the first one in pretty much every way. Um, yeah. I had enough fun with it. Uh, the problem is I'm, I'm very much a story gamer, so I'm motivated by the storyline. And when you sort of finish the campaign, there's not a huge amount of that. It's more activities that you can go and do. Yeah. So it sort of peters out towards me. I, you know, I might pick up a DLC here and there. If I hear the story is good in it, and there's single player sort of content. Uh, but I can't see myself touching it outside of that pretty much going forward. Then again, I had enough fun with it that I think it justified its purchase. Um, I only bought it because we had to review it. So if that wasn't the case, I wouldn't have played it at all. But I would give it probably six out of ten. Well, considering Destiny 1 out of three, 100% yep. better. 100% better. I think that's fair. I mean, that doesn't mean it's a bad game. It's above average. No, no, it's above average. You know, it's, if, if, if that sort of like grinding event type sort of first person body player combat is for you, then you will love it. Yep. Uh, well, maybe when it gets a bit more of it, perhaps. But certainly for me, what it needs to pick me up with the story and I want to see where things go. And that's my motivation for like playing the game, not how shiny my armor is. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not, I'm not that obsessed about how I look. Um, I don't, just to point, pick on that, that shader point we didn't actually get to. We didn't actually, though. <laughs> no, the shader point. So the shaders uh, in the first game, um, I, don't, I can't remember if you actually had shaders. I think I they brought did. them in. Cause, yeah, um, yes, they did, because yeah. you could use them multiple times in the first one. They yeah, you could just choose what kind of colour scheme you wanted. But in this, they're disposable. Um, you use them, and then if you want to change, that one's gone forever. You, uh, and you can't preview them either. You can. Am I thinking of something else? I may be thinking of something else. Yeah, you can preview the shaders. Well, maybe you can now. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. No, Test always, out always on been the like console that. peasants. Yeah. But uh, the, the the shaders, you get so many of them as you go through the game, through your levelling up, through your you know getting engrams and awards and stuff, that you are uh, opening chests and whatnot, you get enough to carry you through. I've got f fucking rows and rows of shaders. Um, I like the red, blacks and whites. So those ones get get used and the others don't. But if I want to change it up, I can. I've got them now. I don't need to go and buy them. But if I wanted to, I could. But you don't have to. And that's the nice thing about the, the microtransactions. You don't have to buy it. It's there for you in the game. And it is prolific enough that you can just carry on. Basketball. Up. It was the basketball hair. Basketball hair? That you couldn't preview. Oh, right. That was it. 
in Destiny 2. No. <laughs> but uh, you can pick up stuff in chest in game and a bit more exploratory stuff. So if you are doing stuff on your own, not just activities with friends, there's stuff to do, stuff to find, stuff to get. So well, that's been our review of Destiny 2. It has. And sorry it was a bit late, but you know we had to spend some time playing it, and it didn't come out until October. Yeah, great. So, Again, PC gets shafted on that. Mm. Shafted because you weren't going to pick it up on console, were you? Oh well, no. So what are you mean about? That it came out later on PC. Still got to play it. Yeah, but later. <laughs> I'm just picking on you now. Yes. Um, <laughs> so, don't cry. Leave until the camera goes off. I've told you about this before. I'll get back in my cell now. <laughs> but guys, it has been fun going through this. I've enjoyed the game. And uh, hopefully, don't forget that we have videos on every Tuesday, Thursday and Saturday for your enjoyment. And be sure to ring the bell so you get notifications for each one of those that goes live. And if you have liked what you've seen today, then give us a like and drop us a comment down below. And most importantly, subscribe because it is important and it helps us. And Nathan Fillion, if you're watching, <laughs> that's so creepy. <laughs> and that's, why, that... that's why it never works on women either. <laughs> <laughs> no, because they don't look like a camera. Maybe there's a woman right now watching. What would you like to say? <laughs> <laughs> so before he has a nervous breakdown uh, guys thanks for watching and we'll catch you next time take it easy guys bye <laughs> he's waiting for that <laughs> <laughs> he's spending 60% of his life locked in his fucking car shooting the same things over and over okay that's a good point we'll come on to this now so in this game we now have access to I don't know if it was in the last game or not I didn't play that one but the, the risk is much higher as well yeah, it's not just a PvP area either. Um, it's an area that allows PvP, but there are uh, AI enemies in there, and they're all hella tough. It's definitely designed for cooperative play in there. Yeah, and I'd actually suggest...